Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and now a partner of a fabulous 25-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours to Italy, Spain, and now Napa over the last 20 years. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. Our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspiring living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture into all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists, and people who just flat out get it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Because Inspiring Living is all about the people and the organizations that inspire us, we are excited to have Monogram Appliances as one of our sponsors. Anytime we do a new kitchen or a kitchen remodel, Monogram Appliances are what we recommend to our client. Their appliances are the definition of luxury meticulously detailed using the finest materials and an ownership experience that is second to none. This is how Monogram is always thinking ahead and inspiring and elevating the kitchen experience. Because at Monogram, they don't just elevate one thing, they elevate everything. Welcome everybody. I hope everybody is doing great, staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, we are in week 10 of uh, working from home at Candelary Design. Uh, yeah, we've got the um, order from the governor that we can go back to work. And a few of us have trickled back over to the office, but uh, I've kind of had our staff stay home. We're going to stay home an extra month and, um, you know, just let things kind of shake out and see where things go and uh, kind of learn from everybody else. So, and we're doing a good job. I mean, everyone's. I think getting a little stir crazy and I'm seeing a few few more trickle back in and um, you know it's nice now with our new expansion we have definitely have six feet of space I think I posted the uh, <coughs> video of a little walkthrough tour last weekend and thanks for all the views on that you guys that was great and um, you know we're just really excited it's gonna be beautiful and like I said we got a lot of space now and <coughs> we're probably gonna hire a couple more people because uh, we are so busy. It's, I think, half of uh, the East Coast and West Coast are all moving to Arizona. This seems to be the, one of the hot spots around. So, uh, and <laughs> pardon the pun on the hot spot. Uh, the, hot, the hot temps are right around the corner. So, hopefully, uh, that uh, 100 plus temperatures will just uh, zap that coronavirus and uh, we can all get back to being normal. Speaking of normal, uh, I had the. Um, occasion last night to meet a friend and client at City Hall for a cocktail at the bar. And yes, they had social distancing. We had to sit, you know, approximately six feet apart. And then they had a spacer before someone else could sit next to us. And so I think the restaurants are doing their best to uh, make this all work. And I'll tell you, City Hall was busy. There was um, definitely a, a steady flow of people coming in. And they were spacing them out as best they could. I, you know, I don't know if it was totally six feet apart, but uh, <coughs> I think uh, you know families and friends could sit together, and then the next group had to sit six feet from away from them. So it was kind of interesting to see how that all worked out. Uh, all the waiters and <coughs> bartenders and everybody had gloves and masks on, and obviously you know you can't eat dinner with a mask on, so. Uh, the patrons weren't wearing masks. Some of them did when they w- walked in, but then as soon as they got in, they got rid of the mask. And you know, we're all going to have to do the best we can. That's just the bottom line here. And uh, <clears throat> I know the stock market was up nearly a thousand points yesterday with the news of the vaccine that is being clinically tested right now uh, with uh, very good results. And <clears throat> I know that's a long road too, but at least it's some encouraging news for a change. And obviously, the market took it as such. And um, had a big pop. And so we'll see where this all goes. Let's just all pray for the best and that we get back to some kind of uh, normal. I'm sure it'll be a little different, but um, hey, we're all adapting to the situation. That's what it's all about is adaptation. Um, that's what we got to do. So I've got a great guest today, <coughs> Corey Oppold. And uh, he is a master chef. He is the executive chef at the Atlas Bistro 
which I have not had the occasion to even check out. And so I'm looking forward to uh, taking Isabel over there and have Corey concoct some amazing uh, dish for us with his um, architectural knowledge and background. And, um, and so hence the reason I interviewed him. I saw his uh, spot on Mark Tarbell's plate and pour. And this guy wanted to be an architect and instead became a chef. And so it's kind of it's kind of the reverse of me. I love being an architect, and I'd love to be a chef, but I'm going to stick with architecture for sure. Uh, but when you see some of this guy's creations, which we can't see on the podcast, but I invite you to go to the Atlas Beast Don't Have Dinner or check them out on uh, Plate and Port. He is truly uh, an artist and um, and a great guy, and I'm looking forward to actually meeting him. I've never actually met him. We did the podcast over uh, the telephone, and so. Uh, him and I are already conjuring up some um, collaborations in the kitchen and in some of my houses. So stay tuned for some of that. But uh, I think you'll enjoy the podcast. He's a great guy. And um, we've got some great guests coming up in the future. So stay tuned. And thanks again for all the listens. Thanks again for watching our cooking class on YouTube. We are, we're going to be making paella on Saturday the 30th. So definitely stay tuned for a live Instagram on that and uh, the YouTube uh, video to follow. Okay. Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. We love y'all. Today's guest is executive chef Corey Oppold of Atlas Bistro in Scottsdale, winner of the Food Network show Chopped and owner of his own company called Course, an in-home dining and catering company. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. And thank you for having me. No, yeah, it's great. I discovered you on uh, watching Mark Tarbell's Plate and Pour one evening. I I sit on my patio sometimes with my iPad and just watch his show and stumbled across the episode that you were featured in. And I'm like, all right, this dude is a, this dude wanted to be an architect, became a chef. It's like you're living my fantasy, my friend. So <laughs> I, I immediately took a liking to you and I started uh, direct messaging with you on Instagram that night. And uh, you were so kind to respond. And, uh, you know, we've actually physically have never met. I've never been to the Atlas Bistro so I feel like I'm totally one of my listeners here today, just, uh, you know, exploring who you are and what you're about, and uh, we'll have some fun here. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, no problem. So um, the restaurant Atlas Bistro, you were just telling me a little bit about that offline here. Tell us a little bit about, about that restaurant, where it's at, and uh, what you guys do there and how you operate it. Yeah, so it's uh, we're, uh, Atlas Bistro is a super small little uh, we're a BYOB restaurant, so that that works out very wine, you know, very well for you know the wine enthusiasts and yep. everything. Um, we are located on Scottsdale Road in Thomas, just a couple, uh, probably about a half a mile uh, south of Thomas on okay. Scottsdale Road. Okay, which side of the street um, are you on? We're, uh, so we'll be on the east side of Scottsdale Road. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, and we're inside a. Uh, I guess you can kind of consider us to be like a in a sense, like a speakeasy, because we're inside this, you know, Arizona wine company uh, store. Okay. And as soon as, as soon as you walk in, you get in, and you'll see us to the left. Um, you walk into our little doorway. Cool. So it's kind of unique and kind of different. Yeah, so you get the wine is basically right there. You just go to the store, order, or pick up what you want, and then just sit down and have dinner, and you're you're good to go. Exactly. And uh, what's kind of, yeah, it's very, uh, our food-wise, it's, you know, we're very, you know, food, uh, wine friendly, I guess I would say. But, yeah. And we also give a, you know, a prefix menu of a uh, three course minimum. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit more of adventurous dining at the same time. Yeah. So being the foodie I am, I guess what I would want to do would be to go into the restaurant, kind of figure out what it is I want to eat and then go to the wine store mm -hmm. and, and pair up a, the perfect wine for whatever you've got in, uh, in your concoction that evening. Is that, is that a way to do it? it, it yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. And, and uh, the servers that we have as well, they're very extremely knowledgeable um, in their wine as well. Some of them are venture enough to, you know, to be in some way. And yeah. so they're very wine knowledge driven. And so they can also help and suggest, you know, any kind of wine pairing. That's so uh, cool. You know, for that menu. That's, so, so that's yeah. awesome. So right now with the uh, coronavirus situation, how are you guys adapting to that whole situation? Yeah, it's... This, this, this thing definitely, um, you know, definitely punched us in the gut. Yeah, like <laughs> I mean, everybody. To say the least, it, 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 it's, it's something that, you know, no one could 
you know, foresee coming for sure. Uh, no one was, you know, prepared for it whatsoever. Right. Um, but to adapt to it, I mean, of course, you know, to protect everyone, we had to shut our doors as well and uh, only offer takeout. And it was just a bit kind of different, you know, in a sense, the takeout for, you know, we're considered, you know, a little bit more higher end food or uh, casual gourmet is what I like to call it. Right. And so that, our style of food doesn't, in a sense, it doesn't translate too well, you know, as a, as a hot to go item <laughs> yeah. that somebody would take home and take home and eat. It just doesn't do it well. Yeah. Well, um, so when I when I watched the episode of Plate and Pour, I mean, what fascinated me about you was the art the artistry that you put into how you plate the food. I mean, it was just impeccable. Mm-hmm. And like I told you, I've been to uh, San Sebastian very several times, which is the foodie mecca food um, foodie mecca of the world. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, when you go to some of these restaurants, it's more about the art almost. I mean, the food is off the charts amazing, but when you see the presentation and how they plate things, it's it's very mathematical. It's very architectural. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and to me, that's I mean, that's the art of. I mean, otherwise, I'm just a you know a culinarian. You know, yeah. To me, a culinary artist is somebody that you know that definitely built. You know, it's more than just the flavors or whatever it may be that the, the diners are experiencing. It's more, you know, the, the visual process, the, you know, the whole process of dining, the art form of it itself. So, but, you know, that's why I like, you know, take the extra step, making everything look beautiful. I mean, it's our jobs already to make it taste good, but right. it's also our jobs to make it look beautiful. Yeah, and that is so much a part of fine dining, I think, that, you know, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate till they experience it. And once they experience it, it's 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 entertaining. I mean, it's just part of the whole. It's just part of the whole experience that you walk away with. And so, exactly. When I saw that episode, I'm like, oh my god, this guy totally, totally gets it. And then when I heard you had an interest in being an architect, at one time, I'm like, I got to meet this guy. So, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's so, awesome. tell me about that. Where, you're from Illinois originally, right? Yeah, yeah. So I grew up in a super small uh, farm town in Illinois, uh, just northwest corner, um, just a couple hours west of Chicago. Okay. Um, but I grew up, uh, you know, still, we still have the dairy farm today. And so, like, growing up that way, like, I always was around, you know, wholesome food. We, yeah. You know, we had our own gardens. We had our cattle. We had our own chickens. You cool. know, we had everything. Yeah. And, I, you know, I didn't. It wasn't until I moved away from it until you really appreciate it. Like, oh, my God, I had so much. Yeah. You know? Isn't that true about so many things? I mean, I think that's one of the yeah, takeaways yeah. from this whole coronavirus thing is, like, we're all sitting there going, wow, I didn't really appreciate all the little wonderful things that were right under my nose that I experienced every day, and, and now I can't do it. So I think that's one of the exactly. lessons from, from life in general. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and, and then when I was, you know, definitely when I was growing up, you know, Hard work was, you know, kind of it, it was part know, and parcel. So hard work and farm. Did. It's just, it's just the way it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the dedication to the whatever craft you're doing, which is that's just a way of life. That was that's just what what, what you do. Um, so like when I got into, you know, culinary, I know it is a lot of long hours, but at the same time, it just it didn't really phase me because this is what it was anyway. Right. So, but. It was just, yeah, definitely a unique thing. Uh, you know, I definitely was going for the architectural, but then when I moved out here, obviously that all changed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so was your was your goal to go to architecture school at ASU? Yeah, yeah. So I was going to go. Uh, I was still paying out of state tuition, so I, I was paying. I went to SCC for just yep. like the first year. Yep. Um, and then I was going to transfer everything to ASU, but. It wasn't, uh, I moved out here when I was 18, and then when I was 19, about to, you know, eventually transfer to ASU, um, I experienced a uh, finer dining restaurant. At the time, it was right to the Biltmore. Okay. And it was the first time I ever kind of experienced where it was like, you know, it wasn't just about food. It was more, you know, it was about the food, the flavor, and the visual aspect. Right. And ever since I dined there, I was, I was hooked immediately, you know, hmm. instead of, you know, buy an architectural digest, I would buy Bon Appetit magazine instead. <laughs> you made the switch. And, you made the pivot. Then, yeah, yeah. So, it was, you know, just, I was more enthralled and I was just, I was, it was, to me, it just became like a process, like a, like almost an obsession. Right. Of like, I wanted to learn more and then one of my friends was like, you know, if you're so enthralled with this, why don't you just go to culinary school? Yeah. And so I did. So where did you go to culinary school? Uh, in Scottsdale there? 
Yeah, yeah. So at the time, uh, Scottsdale Conner Institute was obviously, you know, one of the, the creme de la creme of, uh, you know, Conner School in right. this area. Um, it was, uh, you know, a very, like, you had to, you know, write a letter to even get into there and get accepted. And then, you know, it was, it was a very kind of a big process. And, but it, I got accepted in 2001. And uh, um, it was just like, you know, many hours of schooling and a lot of studying and um but it was a lot definitely a lot of uh, pressure but it was you know to me it was just fun yeah so, so tell me about that i mean uh, it's always been one of my, my fantasies is to go to cooking school like that and so i'm living vicariously through your experience here uh so like in cooking school do you is it like you go up five days a week and is it from like 9 a.m to 5 p.m every day or is it different classes like in college or how does how does it work yeah, exactly. So it was uh, so it was five days a week, and then you would go from seven in the morning. I think we got a, like around two thirty or three o'clock. Okay. So it it definitely was an all day process. Right. And but what was unique about it is I was so new to uh, the whole culinary world. Like I never even stepped foot into a restaurant. I mean, other than to eat. Right. I never stepped foot in a restaurant to cook or to work. Uh, even prior to going to culinary school. Wow. Uh, it just, it was just so you were, learning from, you were learning from bare bones. I mean, you were just going in there and you were learning how to chop an onion and everything. You'd never really done it before. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Was, was, everything was just a brand new world to me. Holy and mackerel. It was, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it was definitely a, a gamble, but I mean, obviously it, it was something I loved and I just knew I wanted to do it. Yeah, so how long is culinary school? I mean, in terms of uh, years or days or months, or how, how long did you have to go? So this, uh, this is more of like an accelerated program. So we're, I think we're there for total, um, in, in schooling was about 10 months, and then uh, we also had an internship, which was, which was another month and a half. Okay. Uh, so it was, a, it was definitely a full-year program. Okay, and is the internship um, program there at the culinary school, or was it in a restaurant? Oh, so yeah, they would call it an externship. So we we would go to another restaurant okay. to uh, fulfill our hours that they needed to, uh, you know, require for graduation. Right. Um, so mine was at a different point of view, which was here on yep. uh, Seventh Street Thunderbird. Yep. Uh, right at the Point Deputio. So that was mine. And, Interesting. Um, that is where I learned so much about everything. It was actually. My my instructor in culinary school for baking uh, and pastry it was it was her husband, um, and she's like you know she su- suggested like why don't you go work for my husband, and um, I, I researched him and you know he was all about the fine dining background and yep. he was very he was a, he was an ex instructor himself so he knew how to teach hmm. and it was just a, good, a really really good fit his name was Ivan Flowers yeah so that's and a nice transition. Just, yeah, still to this day, he's my mentor. I mean, um, he's done so much for me. It's it's literally insane. Yeah, so. now yeah, mentorship is so important. I talk about that all the time. And you know, you can go to architecture school, you can go to culinary school, and and yeah, you learn a lot. But until you mm-hmm. actually get in the field and start applying it, and then learn that aspect of it from your mentors, let's just say, it's it's just a whole different ball game, right? It is. It truly yeah. is. And it was just so new to me that, you know, I, I know I was the like, the slowest person in the kitchen, like, you know, because I would be so meticulous. And, you know, in culinary school, they, they, they definitely teach you, like, the, the basics. Yeah. You know, but they don't teach, I and mean, it's hard to teach you the real world and teach sure. you the real world. Yep. And so it was very intense. And uh, to be honest with you, like, my first year there, or first actually six months were, like, it was... Oh my god! It was like sometimes the worst days of my life. Like it was just so much intensity. Yeah. That it was craziness. Yeah, and, and I, you know, and same thing. Th- same thing in architecture. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's the same thing. I remember, I remember my first, you know, six months of working in uh, George Christensen's office, and you know, I would eat and drink and sleep architecture all day long. I mean, I'd go home and I'd be dreaming about it. Yep. Not, not, in a, not in a good way. It was more about, oh my God, did I remember to do this? Did I do that? I got to do this better. It's like, it was one of those type of experiences. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, and then, you know, that first six months there, I was like, I'm like, man, I sort of doubt myself a little bit. Like, did I yeah. make the right decision? And to be honest, I was, I was about ready to quit. And then he's the one that, you know, even though he was so intense, he just, that's the way he wanted you to learn. It was the, the right way the first time. Yeah. 
And so I, I later saw that and appreciated it. And he's like, you know, I was about to quit. And he's like, no, I want you to stick it out just a little bit longer. Um, cause, and then like things just kind of, one day it just kind of like clicked. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Stuff was easier. And I was no longer thinking about food as a, like a recipe from a book, but it was more like I was learning and I knew how to do it my own way. Yeah. So that's when I was, you start developing dish ideas and I, I started to find my own little, yeah. you know, my way of style of food. Yeah. And that's like the most important thing a chef can find. That's so interesting. So. Yeah, I always, you know, what what I've what I've done is I, you know, I cook a lot, and I'd love to be a great chef. I mean, I I just uh, think what you guys do is just utterly amazing. Uh, and what I love Thank about you. food and, and cooking is it's so much faster than architecture. That's that's the nice part about it. Uh, you know, two years to two or three years to do a house, and maybe two or three hours to do dinner. It's it's a big difference. Uh, but mm-hmm. but you know, when you look at both uh, arts, let's just say. There's a lot of science to it. There's a lot of, of similarities in terms of picking your ingredients, how you combine them, and just how, just like you said, how do you express yourself as a chef or how you express yourself as an architect. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's very similar. They're just one slower, one's faster. Yep, it's very similar. And then, yeah, definitely with the you know the science behind food is there's so much science involved. That That's the thing. That, well, yeah. Thing. And that's same with architecture too. Oh, there's a lot of science and math and all those things, but I love that about food, all the chemistry that goes into it. And, you know, again, watching that episode and again, being in San Sebastian, the school of cooking a few times, it's just, there's so much science to all of it. And the more you can understand all that and then apply what you've learned, it's pretty much endless after that. Right. Yep. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's when you start learning. That the more you learn, you start learning. Okay, I don't know a whole lot. You, you learn that there's a lot more to learn. <laughs> totally, you know, I tell that to people that, all the time. The more, neat. the more I learn, the stupider I become, <laughs> because it's like there's so much more to yeah. learn. You know. Exactly. Yeah, it just exactly. goes forever. So it's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a neat process and a, a neat, great learning process, and it's, it's just one of those things that every day you continue to learn something. Yeah. So, so you've been in this field now how long? Well, I'll say it again, I'm sorry. How long have you been in the field now? In cooking? Uh, so now it would be so uh, 19 years. Oh, geez, yeah. 19 years now. <laughs> <laughs> it goes fast when you don't it's, keep track, doesn't it? It's like all yeah, of a sudden, yeah, wow, 20 years gone yeah. by. So from the different yeah, point of view, years. from the different point of view, where did you go? Okay, so for yeah, from different point of view, so I worked my way up from just a person that's ever even been in a restaurant all the way to uh, eventually become his sous chef and then later his uh, uh, executive sous chef. Okay. And so that uh, that was from 2002 to 2007. Okay. And then I left a uh, different point of view from there. The chef, so he was my mentor. Uh, he left and he went up to La Berge up in Sedona. Okay. And he asked us as a crew, you know, would we be interested as well? And of course, I was, you know, very interested because La Berge is a very prestigious property oh, yeah. up there. Uh, Sedona is beautiful, so it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I was, you know, still only 27 years old, just, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, why not? So I was, became a chef de cuisine up at uh, La Berge up in Sedona. Very cool. And from there, I, you know, I learned a lot more of the multifacets of a of a hotel in a sense or mm-hmm. resort. You know, from breakfast, lunch, dinner, room service to, you know, banquets. It was just a, it was a huge animal. <laughs> it was just a beast of wow. so much work. And it was just it, a really neat thing, though, to see all the parts move. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just kept learning different, different yeah. aspects of the bu- of the business as you went through it. Yeah. 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 It was really neat. So those, and what then, years uh, were, the, what years were you at LaBerge again? Uh, so I was at LaBerge from 2007. To 2000, middle of 2009. Okay, okay. So like two years. Yep. And then where? Then where'd you go? And then, and then during those two years, so and then in 2000, uh, 2008, I was blessed to had a beautiful daughter. Cool. Um, Stella Mason is her name, and uh, so then 2009, you know, I kind of felt the impact. Um, there was a lot of impact from the, you know, just working in the industry and. You know, being a father, you know, a brand new father. Yeah. So what I did uh, do is one of my my mentor that I was working with there, he said he also suggested to me that you know to more efficiently and develop a crew faster in the future as a chef owner, 
why don't you go teach for a little bit? Um, at that time, too, in 2009, um, the culinary school that I went to had a job op- opening for a chef instructor. Hmm. And I've never taught before. And to be honest, I had, you know, almost like a fear of uh, of crowds as well. Not crowds, but a um, stage fright in a sense. You yeah. know? So yep. for me to get up and speak in front of people, it was a big feat. Um, but... I got hired on to the position, and which it worked out perfectly because you know my daughter was so was so young that it gave me more time with my daughter. That's great. You know, and I I think I just kind of I needed that little break from the industry for a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. So how long did you teach them? Yeah, it was just a, it was a good break, and uh, to be honest, uh, you know I learned more by teaching hmm. than I was in the actual field. Interesting. And that's what that's when I really started to hit stride, and I developed my own, um, you know, the way I like to plate, the way I like to put the, you know, the type of food I do. Right. I really honed all that in by, you know, by teaching. I learned a lot more. It was crazy. Yeah. So I saw that so, in that in you know I saw that you actually sit there and you'll sketch out the plate. You'll you'll design it literally on paper, and then you'll craft it as you as you go. So tell us about that. I mean, do you still like to draw? Is that something you still love to do? Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, I love to draw. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that, in high school, I was very, you know, extremely, I was pretty gifted with a number two pencil. It was yeah. crazy. I could, I could sketch extremely well. Um, it's been a long time since I did that, but I still do, uh, you know, I sketch out plate ups. Yep. You know, I try, you know, more often than not, you know, sometimes, you know, my sketches, they work. They translate pretty well to the plate. Yep. Um, but often, you know, we have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, this. <laughs> You know, I forgot to, you know, I, I don't, when I sketch them out, I don't exactly uh, sketch out the colors of, of them. Uh-huh. Sometimes I'll make a plate and it's, I'm like, oh my God, it's all brown, so I need pops of green <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but to me, it's just a good way to like, you know, get some kind of at least a thought behind the dish and you right. know, it kind of helps me build from there. Yeah, so. that's, in, that's interesting. So then I think at one point I read that you worked at Binkley's and you worked at Tarbell's, right? Yep, yep. So from the school, um, I left there about three, actually about four years later. I left uh, and I went to Binkley's because I wanted to learn more about, you know, the multi facets of uh, multi, you know, multi course. Yeah. Um, so I learned. I learned, when I was there. I learned an, ex- an extreme amount. And then also for, after that, then I went. I went to Tarbell's because I want also at the same time I wanted to learn the how a you know a restaurant still doing high-end food can translate their, their their menu to hundreds of people. Right. You know, so from Binkley's going to, to 80 people a night to going to Tarbell's that does, you know, 300 a night. Yeah. You know, I wanted to learn how do you translate all that to volume. Right. Um, and in both, both places I learned so much. That's so interesting. Awesome. Yeah, and those are both two of my favorite restaurants. I mean, I haven't been to Binkley's in a long time, but uh, I remember the times I have gone there, there was like, I, m- I don't remember the dish exactly, but it had LED lighting in it and it had fog. <laughs> it's just like, a, it's like <laughs> I'm going to eat yeah, this thing. It's so it. cool. You know, I just want to look at it. I don't even want to eat this. It's just, a, <laughs> it's just amazing. Uh, but those guys yeah. are just amazing chefs. I mean, and um, I know that yeah, you, they ended, truly are. They truly are. I know you yeah. ended up on uh, Chopped, what, uh, some, what, about a year or so ago? So tell us about that. How yeah, did you? That was, how did yeah. you? How did you get onto that, and how that whole thing work out? Um, so basically, um, so if we go into like right after Tar Bells, I went to the, or I went to Atlas Bistro. Okay. And that's where I was, you know, executive chef there. But it was it was kind of unique. Um, um, they actually called the restaurant because one of the the the, the judges, uh, Scott Con- he, Scott Conan, he has a restaurant out here called Mora. Oh yeah, and I've so never been there. Kinda, I've been. I'm here. I've heard yeah, about it. Yeah. But I've never tried it yet. I've heard it's very good. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's really good. I haven't been there yet either. Uh, sadly enough, I need to get there. Um, but he, yeah, he's a judge on uh, Chopped, and he's the one that kind of brought, you know, Chopped out here to, you know, hey, let's start finding some talent from, you know, Phoenix area or the right. Valley, um, to put onto the show. And so one of the scouting agents, they actually called the restaurant one day and said, hey, would, you know, would anyone like to try out for this and of course i'm like yeah why not you know it'd be kind of you know fun i'm not really a competing chef at all yeah but at the same time i was intrigued enough i'm like oh this you know may sound kind of fun 
Um, so that was like around May of, gosh, maybe like 2016, I believe. Okay. Um, a long time ago. And it almost took like a year and a half process from start to finish to wow. even get onto the show. Holy cow. Yeah, it's, it's quite some time. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into it. Um, a lot of planning, a lot of editing once it's there, and it's huh. a lot on their own for sure. Um, but it, nonetheless, it was a unique experience for yeah. sure. <laughs> so that's a show like so, where I, I get them all mixed up, but they, they, don't they give you like, like there's three rounds and you have like the first round is a appetizer or something like that, and they give you kind of a mystery in, set of ingredients and you have to create an appetizer and then the next one's the main course and then finally a dessert. Is that, that's how it works, right? Yeah, yep, that's correct. Yeah. The first round, yeah, the first round we get a basket of like four ingredients and then yep. you have 20 minutes to make an appetizer. Yep. And you're battling up against four other, sh- you know, three other chefs. Right. And then it, each round, they just dwindle it down to, you know. The final two. At the end of dessert, yeah, dessert, you're at two people. Yeah. And then on dessert round and entree round, you have 30 minutes both. Okay. So. Yeah, that's. But good. it was a very crazy, oh, crazy process. So how do you prepare for that? I mean, do you, pr- you I'm, I imagine you practice and time yourself and. And you have people give you, you know, mysterious baskets. So you you have no clue what you're gonna, you know, get and how you have to prepare for that mentally. How did how did, is that how you did it? Exactly. How did you prepare just like that? Um, it, it was exactly like that. I had my uh, sous chef. He went to the store and he bought, you know, three different basket ingredients. Yep. And literally, I would just time, you know, I would he would bring them out and it was just like chop. Like he here here's your ingredients. I had you know, 10 seconds to look at him, yep. and then he, he would start a clock. And then, you know, basically you can't really train yourself to know what they're going to give you, but you can train yourself that way to, to really experience what is 20 minutes feel like or what is 30 minutes Right, feel like. and how much can I accomplish you know? in that period of time? Exactly, right? exactly. So it, that's where the training was there. And I only did that once or, you know, once, uh, but it, it gave me a good feel like, hey, you just, you, you, you can't really – take a pause you just got to keep going yeah (laughs) you know no matter what and but you do after a while you know through working you know as a chef for many years you come up with these like little things that you know that are like little tricks or you know bag of tricks that you have that hey just in case i got this ingredient i can do this with this right you know so you do have like these little tricks you create a little repertoire of things that you can uh, you can always rely upon you know exactly and things that i could easily do in 20 minutes or 30 yeah minutes, you know yeah um but it was hard to really translate my style of food to chops because i'm chopped your time you know mm-hmm. you have 20 minutes to make a dish where usually at the restaurant it takes me it takes me seven hours to properly cook a tomato down right you know, in a in a 160 degree oven so it's like it's really hard to like you know <laughs> force yourself to cook that way but you have to yeah you know so, so how are you under stress are you are you pretty good with what again no, i'm sorry are you are you pretty good under stress i mean do you some people operate um, really well under stress and other people are just like forget it yeah the stress part yeah i'm pretty good at it the biggest thing you gotta do under those situations is you just gotta have fun yeah you know it's i think it's the people more they work themselves up so much that you almost forget exactly what you're doing. You, can, you, you can't even think. <laughs> but I think once you just start having fun with it, just remember why you're there in the first place. Yeah. Just to cook and have fun. Yep. Then that you know that takes most of the burden off of your shoulders. Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, that's very true. So, it's very true. Same thing with what yeah. we do. You know, again, ours is a more long, drawn out process. But I've learned what you just said is you know try to. Not lose perspective on why you're doing it, what you're doing. There's going to be stress. There's going to be, you know, arrows and bullets you're going to have to duck and, and, and you know, take and <laughs> and then move through it. Yeah. Uh, but you do. You just like, okay, you know, I've been hit with arrows before, and, and yeah, that's going to hurt for a while, but I just got to persevere and keep going and, and get this uh, yep. get this piece of architecture, get this plate on the table, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell the more me, you enjoy it, the better you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. I think that's, I, you know, I just try to just not let it get to me too much, and just know, hey, it's it's, yeah. it's only one day, and you know, this might feel bad for an hour or two, and tomorrow's another day, and there'll be new bullets and new arrows and new things to deal with, and so, you know, you just learn not to to take it too seriously and let things roll and and yep. move on, you know. Because you could sit there and, exactly. and dwell on that stuff forever, and it just it do, it serves no purpose, you know. It really doesn't. Mm-hmm. 
So yep, exactly. You know, there's been plenty of times and where it was kind of fun. Go ahead. Just a neat experience. The whole thing in the chop thing was just a neat. I mean, and Martha Stewart was there too. She was oh, that's cool. So, yeah, yeah. Was, they said my entree. I almost got, I thought I was going to get kicked off the entree route because <laughs> you know they, they they said it was a little too light in flavor, and she described it. You know, she still liked it, but they described it as like spa flavors. <laughs> so I'm like, oh no, you know, I thought I was going to get chopped there, but unfortunately, yeah. It you made it all the way through, huh? Yep, yep. So wh- where were your competitors from? Uh, one actually, uh, one of the competitors was uh, Tamara. She was she's from here at the time. She was from Helio Basin, from in Phoenix. Okay. Uh, but now she's at uh, she's the executive chef at Cotton Copper here. Yeah. In Tempe. Uh, there was another chef uh, from Philadelphia, and the other one was from Las Vegas. Okay. So interesting. Yeah, East Coast, West Coast, and West Coast. So. Yeah. So one question I had that you just made me think of. Um, you know, in the design community, we're all pretty close. I mean, I know a lot of the other architects. I know a lot of the interior designers, landscape architects. I mean, we all get together. We go to functions together. We all know each other. You know, yeah, we're competitors, but we, we kind of have this underlying friendship that that we all share. Is it the same in the, in the food business? I mean, do you guys ever get together or hang out? Or how does that work on your oh, business? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, some of the best parties you'll ever have is a whole bunch of chefs partying it up. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, that we're would all be kind cool. Of in our own little right. <laughs> but yeah, we're all very. I mean, we're all very close. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, especially times like this where everyone's, you know, there's definitely a lot of people struggling. And yeah. Stuff, um, but we try to help out as much as we we definitely can. That's interesting. And, but everyone is very, especially in the valley. Everyone's just, you know. Everyone just kind of helps everyone. Which yeah. Is, you know, really great thing. Yeah. So, no, I think that is really great. Good thing to see. Say it again. I said I think that is very great. I love I love the crossover uh, that kind of comes in information from you know dealing with some of my uh, competitors or cohorts, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's one of the things that you know I'm kind of doing now as we kind of start creeping our way back to whatever the new normal is going to be. Is you know we're fortunate that we can work from home and we can do our business from home, uh, unlike you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but w- as we come back, we really want to assess what's working, what's not working, you know, not jump back too quick and just, you know, really try to talk to each other and say, hey, we're doing this. That's working really well. We did. We tried this. It's horrible. Our employees don't like it. You know, whatever. And I'm sure you guys are probably mm-hmm. doing the same thing with your restaurants. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how you guys adapt to, you know, this new normal that we're all going to be facing here pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was kind of interesting, like, the way we adapted that. Um, I kind of took a thing where, on my private in-home dining, you know, sometimes I'll I'll seal food in a bag. Yeah. You know, where, where it's like, you know, roasted golden beets that are already cooked, and I, I seal them in a bag with the butter, or it could be, you know, other different vegetables or something like that. But I mean, I always put them. I can always put them into one pot to cook or heat up. And when I'm going to somebody's house, because you know, sometimes when I walk into their kitchen, I don't know how much space they have. Right. I don't know how much bur- you know burner <laughs> space. So I'm like, how 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 can I cook five things in one pot <laughs> yeah. and only on one burner? Yeah. You know. So I kind of took those little, that little that little thing that I always do, and I kind of molded that into a new form of. Uh, food delivery, in it, I guess you would say. Right. And right when the pandemic shut down restaurants, it was on a Friday. I remember the last day of service was a Friday. And on that Sunday, the following, two days later, I was hiking and I came up with a thing um, called Simmer Down. Yep. Which is a new the new food thing I'm doing, and it's it kind of you know it, it relates to many different things. Uh, first and foremost, you know the with the thing with the pandemic, you know everyone just to simmer down, which. Simmer down means to re- remain calm in a state of turmoil. Or, and then I looked up turmoil, and you know, turmoil means uncertainty. So it, it the velvet adapted itself very well to the time. And Perfect. Also, the the food, the way that people cook the food is they simmer in these these, these sealed pouches that I, I give to them. They simmer them down. So everything is it just kind of everything related so well to itself. Huh. And. So I, 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 I went on a whim and, you know, bought some food and uh, designed, you know, four dishes that I knew would reheat very well uh-huh. without, you know, jeopardizing quality or, you know, integrity of the food. Yep. And 
you know, from there on out, it's still pretty, it's been selling really well. Oh, wow. So, I, well, I've got to try that. Anything. So, how, I mean, tell yeah, me. Yeah, it's tell, actually been a, quite the adventure. Do you just, do you have, like, yeah. you have like a website that I go to and I just order it there? Um, so, what's basically happening is uh, I, I don't have, I'm developing the website right now. Okay. Um, the, um, but right now, I just kind of I advertise it through Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And people just private message me for the orders, and then they come and pick it up on Fridays or Saturdays uh, from Atlas Bistro. Okay. And But right now, I'm working on, I talked to a friend that uh, is a distribution company, and uh, so we're gonna get, uh, I'm going to get a website up, and then people can do online ordering, and we're going to develop uh, delivery as well. See, I, so I, think that's amazing. I, think that's, I think you're spot on, my friend. I, I think... This, yeah, this, yeah, it's just... One of those things that's like, and, and, and the, the meals are complex, but they're, they're, they're so easy enough that people, they just put it, and I put the amount of time that yep. the, these pouches have to be simmered, and people are really enjoying them, and people get to plate them, you know, they get to plate them at home, yeah. which has been a lot of, you know, a lot of, it's very neat to see when they post on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> of their plating design, it's really kind of cool. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. No, that's cool. I'm going to have to give that, a, I'm going to give that a try. That sounds awesome. So, that that is just basically I order it, I pick it up, and I simmer it at home and serve it, and I'm I'm good to go. Yep, yep, but, and I was, yeah, because I was just trying to think of something that you know, a lot of takeout food is hot, yeah, and, and it needs to be eaten right away, and sometimes it doesn't translate well to reheating. Right. But this one, I kind of work it. I work it backwards, where you pick it up cold and you have to reheat it whenever you want to, whenever you want to eat it. Yeah, that's good. And, the way that the food is designed is that <laughs> generally it's a lot of braised items or something like that. So as they sit in that pot of water, they actually better. get better <laughs> yeah. as, as they sit. Yep. So it's kind of you know it's just kind of a different little route. That's so funny. It's been kind of fun. Oh, uh, that's I, literally what Isabel and my wife Isabel and I have been doing here at the house. We'll we'll cook up a bunch of stuff on the weekend when we have time, and we'll virtually put them in our Ziploc pouches. And in the fridge, then we just kind of heat them up on the during the week. Say, oh, that's that was I want that. To, so it's the same idea. And it, it's fa it's exactly what you said. Many of those things that they yep, sit, exactly. they they actually get better and better the more they sit. So yeah, I love yeah, that idea. Exactly. So okay, yep, so tell me about your tell me about your course your course project too, where you do the catering because you you mentioned that a little bit here earlier, and I know I tend to cook for a lot of my clients. I'll go to their house and. You know, when the house is all finished three years later or whatever it is, I'll cook a nice dinner for them in their house. And I've been to, I've been to some houses 10 years later when they say, well, we're finally ready for you to come cook. And I'll go in there and the, I open the oven and the paperwork is still in the oven. They've, ne they've never used this kitchen. That if I showed you this kitchen, <laughs> Corey, you would freak out. You would be like, are you kidding me? This is the most incredible <laughs> kitchen. It's never been used. And it's happened like two or three times in my career. And it's like, oh, my God, I would die for this kitchen. So what I want to do, funny. here's what I want to do is I want to get I want to get with you on one of these mm -hmm. cooking my kitchen uh, shindigs, and you and I will cook mm -hmm. together. You'll teach me a few things, and I'll get you cooking in one of these incredible kitchens. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right. So and that, with the course, you come and cook at their house. You it's basically catered, and you prepare the food there. Or you prepare a lot of it and bring it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, yeah, I would prepare it and then bring it in. And there's some, there's a lot of stuff I have to do at their house as well. Yeah, okay. Um, but I try to minute, minimize it to me only being uh, probably about an hour and a half to two hours earlier prior yeah. to service. Yeah. Uh, prior to whenever they want to sit down. Gotcha. And it's a lot of fun. It's just like one of those things where it's just you know, it, it it's something that they don't expect. You know? Right. And it's, generally, I do about five courses and. Um, it's one of those things where I work with the client to, you know, they get, they give me their, li their likes and dislikes yep. and we kind of email them and you back and forth yep. and we chisel it away and, uh, you know, we finally tweak it. So it's yep. kind of, it's been, it's a fun process. Yeah, no, that sounds similar to what I do. I'm sure you do it at a whole higher level than I do, but it's the same basic idea. <laughs> and you know, what's, what's fun about it is like you said, just a minute ago, people don't, ex they, they have an expectation in their mind. But then when you mm -hmm. come and do it and do it to the level that, you know, you do it or I do it, it's way beyond what they expect. And they're just like, this is yep. so amazing. This is so fun, you know. So yep. So it's, when you come, do you have a little. It's for them, too. Yeah. Do you have a little crew so with you then? Do you have like, like three or four people that help you? Or how do you, how do you go about that? 
Um, if it's generally if it's a, a party of maybe you know six or less, like I I can do you know easily myself. But yeah. you know I cook and then I serve and I clear and everything wow. like that. And then I'm also like a little bit of OCD, so like I'll. You know, when I, I'm, I'm like a cleaning service at the same time at the end of the night. Like, your house is, you know, your Spotless. kitchen is cleaner than it was when I got there sometimes. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah, well, it, yeah it's really neat in there. I've gotten smart and actually, I've actually brought on a little crew. I've got a little two-person crew that helps me with the with the serving, the plating, the, the cleaning. And boy, that, that makes a big difference. So, because uh, yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah, People don't realize it. cooking is one aspect, but all the cleaning and prep, that's a, that's a, that's a whole other ball game. It, it truly is. Yeah, if it's a party of like you know maybe ten or more, of course I'll you know I'll bring like a sous chef with it. And yeah. Even more than that, I'll bring a server with it as well. If they want like really in depth wine service, right. I'll bring a server with it as well. So it all kind of depends, but the majority of the parties they're generally around five to six people, and they just want to be relaxed and sure. you know chill in their own home is what they want to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. So it's it's pretty neat. That's really nice. How was the large? What's good the food and a lot of wine. What's the largest group you've ever done? Um, with the the whole dining thing, the largest I ever did was actually a wedding, which was 150 people. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah. you, you didn't do so that, that by yourself, uh, that's for sure. No, 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 no. Yeah, that one took a small little army. <laughs> yeah, so that, was a, that was a fun one. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's crazy. So, um, so you've told us about Simmer Down. You told us about Course. That's some pretty cool things. I want to try both of those. And like I say, I'd love mm -hmm. to. I'd love to collaborate with you on one of these with one of our clients in our kitchen. So we'll talk about that here down the road, and hopefully that'd be something you'd be interested in. And and then I've been. I, love to. I talked to you a little bit about traveling and maybe getting you on one of our uh, tour Spains or tour Italy's and get you to go to San Sebastian with us and maybe be our guest chef along the way. It'd be something like we that we could collaborate oh my gosh, on. I would love to. Would that be fun? I would love to. Okay. Yep. I've actually never been to neither Italy or Spain. I've well, yeah. so I need to take you. I need to, I need to be the one who takes you to these places because I'll introduce you to some great chefs and some amazing local uh, locales, and we'll just. I mean, we'll have a. You'll you'll walk away from that trip, just especially San Sebastian, just totally. Uh -huh. well, I'll tell you what would be fun on that trip because we go to the San Sebastian School of Cooking and we do a, a it's about a five hour maybe four hour cooking class. And I think it would be so would fun be awesome. to bring you in as a ringer. You know what I mean? Is basically, you know, they, we got these great chefs that are teaching us how to do all this stuff. And I think it would be so fun to have you in there and you start whipping some of them. These guys look at look at you like, who in the hell is this guy? <laughs> I think that would be I think it would <laughs> be hilarious. Be yeah. So we got we got to do that <laughs> at some point. And then the other thing I want to talk to you about too is is locally. I think you know with with you know we're not going to Spain probably this year or or Italy, is is I want to kind of start formulating some local tours of some great venues where we can teach people how to cook and and you know enjoy some good wines and be in this just great spot uh, for like a long mm -hmm. week for a long weekend you know like a five, four day a four like Thursday to Tuesday where they they cook they dine they spa they hike and it's just a just a four day total experience so I, I'd love to talk to you about that sometime too and see if we can put something together like that I think people Absolutely. Would, people would love that and we don't have to go teaching is one of my huge passions I'm yeah to teach. It's, yeah you know yeah that's perfect so that, that would definitely be fun so and then you know the other thing is combining it with some of our houses is maybe do a cooking class in one of these great kitchens that never get used so we might we might go down that path too so we've got, I've got all kinds of I've awesome. got all kinds of ideas brewing. When I saw when I saw you on Plate and Pour, I says, "Oh my God, I got to connect with this guy. We're gonna have we're gonna have too much fun." So <laughs> no, for sure, just keep me posted. For yeah, sure. for sure. So what what kind of things? I mean, you mentioned you have a daughter. Uh, what what do, what do you do to get away from cooking? I mean, do you hike? Do you what? I mean, you don't you don't go cook to get away from cooking. I, that's my that's my escape. But what's your escape? Maybe you do architecture. I don't know. Uh, uh, to be honest, like, I, I, I love to, you know, I just love to work out. Uh, hiking is definitely one of my bigger things, though. Yeah. Um, and hiking is usually that, that thing that, you know, you free your mind enough. Like, I, I don't think about much, but when I do, I, that's usually when I, I try not to think when I'm hiking, but that's usually when I come up with my great ideas. Yeah. When I'm hiking. Yep. Like, the simmer down thing came up when I was hiking. The truffle thing with the... But we took coach on the plane pour that came from hiking. Yeah, that you was know, so amazing. Many weird things. <laughs> so, yeah. No, it's cool. I, I do the same thing. I love to hike because it just clears my brain completely. 
you know, I'm just sitting there focused yeah. on w where's the next rock and where am I stepping? And, you know, your, your brain just goes to total zero. And then, like you say, I get these just like amazing ideas that just pop in my head out of nowhere. And so I love, I love it exactly. for, the, for the same reason. Um, okay. So another question I have is do, do chefs watch the food network or do you guys, where do you guys, where do you go to find inspiration? Um, usually, usually sometimes like, you know, definitely books are inspiration. Yeah. Um, even sometimes like Instagram, like sometimes you'll see, you'll scroll through and you'll see a plate up and it, you know, if you see any, you kind of look at it and it like gives you different ideas of plate ups and stuff like right. that. You're not, you're not, uh, and, or you see like a piece of, uh, you know, pork cheek or something like that. And then, it, you know, you start thinking about pork cheeks and then you <laughs> develop a whole new different idea of what, you know, things can be, but. I would definitely say social media is a huge inspiration. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, you know, books are. Yep. So. Yeah, no, for sure. But, uh, I, yeah. For me, I have the Food Network. Instagram, is, I think, is a huge one, for sure. Yeah, I have, the, like, the Food Network on when I'm drawing. I just have it in the background, and I'll be listening. I'll go, oh, I've never tried that before. That's pretty cool, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll jot down a couple quick notes, and then later that evening, I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a whl. That was pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah, I just wonder exactly. what I always just wondered what chefs do, but I mean, there's so many great books, and like I said, I, I think social media is great. I love Flipboard. I love going there and just, you know, typing in keywords, and all of a sudden, all these great ideas from around the world pop up, and yeah. it's just it's just amazing. That's exactly and, 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 like seasons to me are like the biggest thing too, because my biggest my favorite thing to cook is vegetables. So like. You know, definitely during the summer, like, you know, you start thinking about, like, watermelon or different melons, cucumbers, tomatoes. Yeah. Like, those are, like, the biggest, the seasons itself are the biggest inspirations as well. Right. You know, and then as soon as Halloween, pat, you know, Halloween's coming up, you know, you start getting into all the, you know, the acorn squash yeah. and all these other different things. <laughs> to me, that's, like, the best part is, you know, the Mother Nature aspect tells you exactly what to cook. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's what's fun to me. No, and the seasonality of it is so neat. And, and you know, another great thing about Mark's show is just all the local uh, producers out there of so many great products that I just wasn't even aware of. You know, there's farmers and, yep. and ranchers and, you know, vineyards. And, I mean, Arizona is a pretty remarkable state when you really think about it, what's, what's really right here under our nose. It is. It truly is. There's so many. There's so much talent out here. It's, it's, it's really, really insane. Yeah, it is insane. So, it's, yeah. We're just lucky to have like a you know show like Plate and Point to really you know celebrate it, educate and show everyone exactly what Arizona is, is potential of. Yeah. So. And it's gotten a lot better. I mean, in the years that you've been here, haven't you seen? It just seems like in the last, to me, the last five to ten years, it's just really like blown up in terms of the it food, has. food quality. Yeah, and we've definitely boomed, and you know, if it, I'd really like to see you know, you know, hopefully this pandemic just you know hurry up and, yeah. you know, and start opening our restaurants again. But I, I'd like to see, you know, in the next 10 years, it's going to get even bigger. Yeah, I think so. I think it will. I think this whole town is going to go kind of crazy, to, you know. <laughs> There's so many people wanting to move here. I know it's 100 degrees out there. I'm looking outside right now, and it's, yep, it's, it's got the sun's got that look like a nuclear bomb just went off, you know. But uh, exactly. I, nothing nothing lives in 110, so <laughs> hopefully the coronavirus is one of those, <laughs> one of those things. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say this has been great talking to you. I cannot wait to actually meet you after having this conversation. And, uh, yes, please keep, yeah, keep me posted and come in and eat sometime or whatever. Oh, we'll be, we'll be there. <laughs> I, I want to try the simmer. I want to try all this stuff. So, And then we'll talk about some of these collaboration projects because I think that could be a total win-win for both of us. So, uh, yes, I, please. It'd be awesome. I think this is the start of many things to come, my friend. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. It was a pleasure to talk with you. You too, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. I want to say a big thank you to my good friends at Stockett Tile and Granite Company, where your project is our priority. The Stockett team, along with so many others, are wrapping up the final details on our demonstration kitchen at our new expansion of our Candelaria Design offices. We've started our online video cooking classes, and our kitchen is amazing. I have had the pleasure of working with the Stockett team for nearly 40 years on some amazing projects, and trust me, they are the epitome of excellence when it comes to tile, marble, and granite, work bar none. Their skill and customer service is impeccable, and the bottom line is they are just good people. I have traveled with, dined with, and just had good times, both personally and professionally, with Dave Stock and his lovely wife, Becky, and they are the best. When it comes to your next kitchen, make sure Stock It Tile and Granite is a part of your team. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. 
we encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening, and we look forward to sharing more insights to inspiring living next week.